Thank you for joining me for Family Storytime with Northfield Public Library. My name is Emily, and I like to start story time with something we call the bread and butter chant. This is a fun thing to do with your own name, with the names of your friends and family, and today we're going to do the bread and butter, butter chant with the word hello. So we're going to put our hands on our thighs, and it goes like this. Bread and butter, marmalade and jam. Let's say hello as slowly as we can. Hello. That's so neat because we can hear all the different sounds in the words, right? Yeah, in the word hello. Okay, now we're gonna say it as quickly as we can, just for fun. Bread and butter, marmalade and jam. Let's say hello as quickly as we can. Hello. <laughs> good job, good job. All right, well, welcome. It is time to meet our letter of the day. And that happens to be right here. <gasps> if you know its name, you can call it out. What letter is this? Yeah, it's an I. What sound does I make? Yep, sometimes it goes, eh, eh. That's what it does most times. But sometimes it also goes, I, I, it says its name. Just like A and E and O and U, those are all the vowel sounds. And they have two different ways they can say, they can sound. So an I will sound like I for words like important or immigrant or inside or iguana. And it will sound like I for things like ice cream or island. Let's put our fingers in the sky. We're gonna write a letter I. This is a pretty easy one, right? Do we need a curvy line? No, we just need one vertical straight line that goes up and down. So we're gonna start at the top and go like this. Very good, good eyes, everybody. And our story today and our rhymes are going to be about another thing that starts with I. They're going to be about insects, insects. So, before our first story, there's an insect we need to find. Let's see if you know this insect. It's tiny, it's red usually, it has black spots on its back. Ladybug, yes! We are looking for a ladybug and behind one of these doors, a ladybug is hiding. So let's look at these doors. We've got a blue one, a purple one, a yellow one, and a red one. Which one do you think our ladybug is hiding behind? I want you to think in your mind and pick a color. That's gonna be your color where you think ladybug is hiding. And we're gonna do another rhyming chant like we did with bread and butter. And this chant goes, ladybug, ladybug, playing hide and seek. Are you behind the... I'm gonna guess it's the yellow door. Are you behind the yellow door? Did you guess yellow? We'll find out. Let's take a pick. Oh, oh, she's not there. She's not there. What other door should we try? Let's make a beat on our legs this time and we chant together like this. Ladybug, ladybug, playing hide and seek. Are you behind the purple door? Let's take a peek. One, two, three. Is she there? Oh no, she's not there. Let's try the red door. Ladybug, ladybug, playing hide and seek. Are you behind the red door? Let's take a peek. One, two, three, is she there? Oh, she is there. There's our red bug, there's our ladybug. Were you hiding behind the red door because you're red? I wonder. We found our ladybug, so it is time for our story. This is one of my favorite stories to read. It's called Bear and Bee. And it's by Sergio Rezier. He wrote the book and did the illustrations and did the art. And parent caregiver tip, so much, by far the maximum amount of kids' attention and probably adults when reading books is on the images. So when you get a chance to, and when the words are big like this, it's good to underline them because it just kind of draws their attention to the word and, hey, these abstract letters mean something. All right, here we go. Here's bear and bee.
Oh, and here's Bear. He's got his hands on his tummy, I wonder why. And what do we see in the tree there? Do you know what that is? <gasps> yeah, it's a beehive. What do bees make in the hives? They make honey, and bears love to eat honey. So here's Bear holding his tummy, and he says, I'm hungry. Mmm, honey. And who's this? That's a bee. Would you like some honey, says bee? Well, I would love some honey, says bear. But what about the bee? Have you ever seen a bee, asks bee? No, says bear. I hope I never see a bee. Do you see a bee? Yeah. Bear's never seen a bee. He's formed a picture in his mind of what a bee looks like in his imagination, an image in his mind. And this is what he thinks bees look like. Bees are terrible monsters. They're big, they have large teeth, and they have sharp claws, and they never ever share their honey. What do you think? You are big, says Bee. Mm-hmm, says Bear. And you have large teeth. Uh-huh, said Bear. And you have sharp claws. Uh-oh, says Bear. all those things he thought he imagined bees had. Oh, poor me. I'm a bee. I'm a bee. You are not a bee, says bee. You are a bear. Oh, right, says bear. I am a bear. What are you? I a bee. You're a bee, said Bear. But you're not big, and you don't have large teeth, and you don't have sharp claws. Hmm. Do you share your honey? Well, would you like some honey, says Bee. Wait for me, says Bear, as they go to the hive. Mmm, honey. And finally, Bear says, Bee, I'm glad you are a bee. And that is Bear and Bee. Now, have you ever pictured something in your mind? I know for me, it was my first haircut when I was very little. And I had this idea of what it was gonna be like, when it was gonna look like, and I was a little scared about it. And then when I went to get my hair cut, it was totally different from what I imagined, just like Bear. Sometimes our imaginations, when we don't exactly know what a situation is gonna look like, they make an image, but then we go, and our image, our dream, wasn't really quite what was happening. Let's put our hands up and do a rhyme together. This is a rhyme about opposites. Now we've looked at ladybugs, we've looked at bees. I know. Let's make our two hands grasshoppers. Now do grasshoppers slither? No. <laughs> do grasshoppers gallop? No. Grasshoppers jump or it's right there in their name, grasshopper. So get your grasshoppers up and here's how our rhyme goes. Two little grasshoppers sitting in the grass. One named slow, the other named fast. Hop away slow. Hop away fast. Hop back slow. Hop back fast. <laughs> oh, good job. I know, how about beetles? Beetles kind of scuttle around, right? They scuttle, so our beetles are going to scuttle. Here we go, make your beetles. 
two little beetles far from the crowd. One named Quiet, the other named Loud. Scuttle away, Quiet. Scuttle away, Loud. Scuttle back, Quiet. Scuttle back, Loud. Okay, good job, good job. Well, every week we like to share a tip about one of the five best things you can do to get ready to read. And today's tip is on reading, reading. And today's tip is that when you're reading with your kiddos, don't forget the nonfiction. Nonfiction exposes us to so many more vocabulary words than a picture book. And a picture book exposes us to so many more words than regular conversation. So I was gonna show you some cool bug facts that I found in some nonfiction, some true books that you can check out from the library. This book is called Minnesota Bug Hunt, and it is by Bruce Gibnick and Bill Johnson. I like this book because you can see all the bugs really up close, and all of these bugs are ones you can find in Minnesota where we live. Here's the cool one I found in here. I wonder, have you ever seen foam like this on a plant? I know I have. And I've always wondered, what is that foam? And here's what I learned. That is from a meadow spittle bug. Spit, just like spit bubbles, right? And when a me meadow spittle bug is scared, he makes these bubbles all around him and he hides in the middle of the bubbles. So it's a metal spittle bug hiding itself when you see those little bubbles. I thought that was pretty cool. And one more thing. This is an awesome big book called Little Kids First Big Book of Bugs. It's from National Geographic. It's by Katherine Hughes. And here's what I wanted to show you. Do you know what kind of insect those are? Can you tell? You don't usually see them in that formation, do you? Those are ants. And ants, when they need to get somewhere and there's nothing to climb over, like a, you know, like a twig or we would say a bridge, they build a bridge from their own ant bodies. So they'll all get together and build a bridge and then another ant will walk up the bridge like that. That was a pretty cool, interesting uh, insect fact. So you can learn a lot from both my Little Kids First Big Book of Bugs and Minnesota Bug Hunt. Ah, but it is time for us to do something that lets us shake. Let's play a listening game, okay? So do you have something on hand that you can shake? I've got a shaker egg. Uh, you might have a sock or a pair of underwear. No, that'd be silly, but you can. Or you could have a paper towel, anything like that to shake. Um, if it makes noise, great, but it's also okay if it doesn't make noise. And you know what? If you don't have anything with you, you can just shake your hands, because that's fun too. All right, so here's our listening game. It's gonna build our listening skills and our self-control skills. Uh, we're gonna pretend we have a bumblebee resting. And shh. We're going to be quiet, and then when it's time to go, the bumblebee is going to go. So, bumblebee, bumblebee, resting, resting, bumblebee, bumblebee, resting, go! Bumblebee, bumblebee, buzzing, buzzing, bumblebee, bumblebee, buzzing, go! Bumblebee, bumblebee, buzzing, buzzing, bumblebee, 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 stop! <gasps> Good job! What other insects should we have? Um, let, there's an insect called a katydid. Let's make it a katydid. Okay, and a katydid, katydid doesn't buzz, but a katydid, let's just say they move. They just walk a little bit, so walking. But first they're resting. Katydid, katydid, resting, resting. Katydid, 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 go! Kitty did, kitty did, walking, walking, kitty did, kitty did, kitty did, walk, kitty did, kitty did, walking, walking, kitty did, kitty did, kitty did, stop. <laughs> Good job. Let's see here. Let's do one more together. Hmm, another insect. Have you ever seen a walking stick? They walk. They are insects that look just like sticks. It's a kind of camouflage. They look like sticks to try to fool the birds that would eat them. So we're going to have a walking stick resting then walking. Walking stick, walking stick, resting, resting, walking stick, walking stick, walking stick, rest. 
Walking stick, walking stick, resting, resting, walking stick, walking stick, walking stick. Walk! Walking stick, walking stick, walking, 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 stop. Okay, it is hard to say those words that fast. I have learned. Okay, we're gonna do one more rhyme together, real quick, before we sing our closing song. We're gonna make a beehive with our hands like this. Uh, and our rhyme goes. We'll do it twice. Here is the beehive. But where are the bees? <gasps> Hidden inside where no one can see. Watch as we let them out of the hive. One, two, three, four, five. They're alive! <laughs> okay, let's do it again. Get your beehive ready. Here is the beehive. But where are the bees? Hidden inside where no one can see. Watch as we let them come out of the hive. One, two, three, four, five, they're alive! Okay, good job. It is already time for our closing song. Our closing song is called these are my glasses. So first, you'll need a pair of glasses. You can put them on. These are magic glasses. If you already wear glasses, you can put them right on top of those glasses. And we're gonna look up. We're gonna look down. We're gonna look all around. And then we're gonna put our hands together and make a book. And today, everything in our book is going to start with the letter I. That I that sounds like inside, inside, or that I that sounds like ice cream, ice cream. So let's see what's inside here. Oh my goodness, it's an impatient iguanodon. Close the book. Whew, that was close. What else could it be? Let's open it up. Oh, it's imaginary ice cream. One thing I love about imaginary ice cream is that even if you're allergic to ice cream, you can still eat imaginary ice cream. What flavor is your imaginary ice cream? Tell your grown up. I'll wait. Yeah, I have chocolate imaginary ice cream. So then we're gonna gobble it up. It's imaginary ice cream. <laughs> and let's put our glasses on and we'll sing this. These are my glasses, this is my book. I put on my glasses and open up the book. Now I read, 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 and I look, look, look. I put down my glasses and whoop, close up the book. Thank you for listening to our stories today. Come check out some nonfiction, some real facts about bugs. And everywhere you go today, look for our letter of the day, I, eh, eh. I. And if you don't go anywhere, maybe your grown-up can write down some words, some that have the letter I and some that don't. See if you can find the ones that have the letter I. Thanks again. Take care.